When we launched this channel, we really wanted it to be about helping all different types of people travel. And one of the things we noticed on our Plus Size 101 and 102 travel videos is that there was a lot of questions about mobility, whether it be people who are unable to walk long distances, using a walker or a cane, or even using a wheelchair, or bringing their own wheelchair along. And we realized that this was a, a topic that's very nuanced and it needed its own video. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna talk about traveling with or without a wheelchair and limited mobility. Now, small caveat, I am not an expert in traveling with um, a wheelchair or with limited mobility. I have some experiences in traveling with my stepmother who has been in a walker at various points of time and doing some travel in an electric wheelchair at things like Disney World when I had an injured foot. But by no means does this make me an expert on this subject. So what I did instead for this video is I did a lot of research up front and then I also reached out to my friend Chelsea Chelsea, who is an expert at traveling with an electric wheelchair, and she's gonna pop in this video from time to time, giving pro tips from her personal experience. And she's literally traveled all over the world with an electric wheelchair, has all the great stories and all the horror stories, and I think it's really gonna help round out this video for someone like me who hasn't experienced as much as her. If you guys wanna check her out, links to all of her socials are down below, and she is an amazing follow, guys. Her content just brings me so much joy and also educates me a lot about what it's like to travel with a wheelchair. So with that guys, let's jump right into the video. Hi everyone, my name is Chelsea Bear and I wanna thank Anna for letting me be part of this video. Traveling with limited mobility is something that I share about a lot on my own platforms. And I think it's really important to have conversations like this to give people the resources that may have limited mobility to understand that travel is possible, but it of course takes a lot of extra planning, managing expectations, and just making sure you're prepared for certain things that can come up. So to give a little bit of insight about me personally, I have a disability that impacts the way I walk. It's called cerebral palsy, and I use a mobility scooter part-time that I call Scoots. So I can walk independently, but I usually use my mobility scooter for long distances, especially when it comes to traveling and navigating an airport. One thing we talk about in this channel that will be no exception in this video is that it is totally possible with a plan. And like any type of situation where you are traveling, planning is key. So let's talk about booking your flight. Unfortunately, the standards for booking a flight or traveling with a wheelchair or cane or walker are not consistent against each airline. But each airline does have a disability desk. You're gonna to wanna to call them as your first step in travel. They're gonna tell you about booking a flight. They're gonna tell you what options are available as far as pickup and drop off. If you're traveling with an electric wheelchair, they're gonna tell, tell you where you drop that wheelchair off and where you pick it up and how you get to the plane from that point onward. So there are two questions we suggest asking when talking to a disability desk. The first is, are there any policies or procedures you need to know about? when you're traveling with a wheelchair or other mobility device, such as a walker or a cane. They're gonna give you the real deal for their airline and help you be prepared. The second question is about battery package and storage. What are the requirements by that airline as far as what you can have? So you make sure that you get a battery pack through the check-in aisle and through your suitcase. Packing for someone with limited mobility is gonna be a little bit different than the average person. So candidly, we're all gonna pack our clothing and our skincare and our makeup, that's pretty standard. But when traveling with a mobility assistance device, you're gonna to wanna to think about packing backup batteries, extra charging cords, because if those things break in another country, you can't easily replace them and may not be able to get the right model for your vehicle. Additionally, you wanna look at things like uh, tennis balls for your bottom of your walker as an extra piece just to prevent damage if you're traveling with a mobility assistance device. You also have to think about things like basic upkeep, like God forbid something breaks, how are you gonna make it work? So things like zip ties, duct tape, little things just to manage your um, mobility device while traveling. Um, I'd love to jump to Chelsea right now. She's gonna show us what she takes with us on a flight to give us a better idea of someone who actually travels with a wheelchair and what they bring with them or what they feel is necessary to bring with them. I'm gonna share some of the things I do traveling with a mobility scooter on an airplane. And I wanted to start with the type of bag I bring with me and some of the things I personally do to prepare myself and my scooter while traveling on an airplane. So I recently started using a new backpack. 
This is from Jansport, and it's actually a part of a new line they have that is an adaptive collection. So as you can see, it kind of looks like a regular Jansport, um, just at first glance, but if you look closer, if you do use a wheelchair or mobility scooter or a walker or whatever it may be, there is a bunch of different ways that you can kind of hang this backpack on whatever your mobility device is. So if you have a wheelchair, here are two loops for the handles. Um, there's also a lot, of, this little handle here has a clip, so it's easy if you're not able to hold it and you need to clip it on and off. The straps are really adjustable. Also here, there's an extra strap if it needs to go over the back of a wheelchair or even a mobility scooter. And then there's just a lot of pockets, a lot of different compartments, and all of them have loops, um, easy to use and slide. Um, so it's been really helpful for me. I always bring a carry-on with me because there's certain things, even if I am checking a bag, that I want to make sure I have with me just in case my bag gets lost or delayed for whatever reason. So something I always bring with me on a flight, whether I'm checking a bag or not, is my charger for my mobility scooter. The last thing I want to do is make it to my destination, not have my bag, and then my mobility scooter die and there's no way for me to charge it. So this is something I always keep on me just in case I lose my bag. Um, another kind of pro tip, if you are traveling with your own mobility device, there are a lot of things that could potentially go wrong when it comes to the airlines dealing with it, moving it around. I thankfully have had pretty positive experiences for the most part, but I do like to keep everything on my scooter as condensed as possible when handing it off to the airline crews. So things that can easily be knocked off on my scooter, for example, my basket on the front, um, it really is easily just like taken off and put back on. So I usually remove that before giving that to the, the gate crew to bring it down to the bottom of the plane. And then another example here, I have this detachable cup holder that I put on my scooter that I always travel with. It's just helpful when I'm scooting to be hands-free. If I have a coffee, I could put it in my cup holder. But this is something, if they are getting a little rough with my scooter, it's super easy for them to knock off. So this is something I'll take off before boarding the plane and then put it in my carry-on just to make sure it's safe, doesn't get lost and uh, beat up. Some other essentials that I always carry with me on my carry-on are any medications I may need, any prescriptions, things like that that are really important for me to have, I make sure are readily available and on my person, so it's my responsibility. Another really great travel hack when it comes to traveling with a mobility device that I've been seeing some other people doing is duct taping instructions or directions on how their specific chair works. So for example, my scooter, the seat can come off, you just pull directly up, but if a crew member goes to lift my scooter, they may not know that. So I created kind of like a little cheat sheet of things that they should know that either can be touched and adjusted on my scooter or certain areas that absolutely should not be adjusted. Um, you know, and that can be for anyone specifically with a wheelchair that's specific to them. If they have a hand controlled device that absolutely cannot be impacted or broken because that would totally remove all function of the chair, they can include that on that cheat sheet and hopefully the people working with your scooter or wheelchair will reference that and be a little bit more delicate when it comes to transporting it under the plane or wherever they may need to bring it. Again, with that vibe, I always talk about this with plus size clothing. You have to bring the things you can't buy in another country, right? And unfortunately for plus size, it's things like underwear, bras, and shorts. Well, when thinking about this in a mobility device, you might think about stuff like adaptable clothing, clothing that works with your wheelchair. It's probably gonna be very difficult to replace that last minute. So having those items or extras of those items with you is really important. You also might wanna look at other things that help support your body while you're traveling or transitioning from your wheelchair to your bed or to the bathroom or whatever it might be. So things like extra handles, pillows for support. And then honestly, adapters. This is one that I like didn't even think about, but if you have to charge 
your uh, wheelchair and you're in a foreign country and you don't have the right adapter, that could be a huge problem. And sometimes hotels just don't have them. So making sure you have the things you need to charge in a foreign country is really important. At the airport, unfortunately, if you're traveling with a mobility device, arrive early. People run late. There's other people that they're moving to and from gates. So you might have to wait a little bit and you don't want to be rushed. Additionally, we always say this, but pre-check is a great option. It helps you skip lines. Now for most airlines, if you are in a wheelchair or are being wheeled to the gate due to limited mobility, they will let you skip, but sometimes they don't. So having TSA pre-check just makes it easier on you because you know for sure you're not gonna have to just like sit there with somebody you don't know who's pushing you, which is always slightly awkward. Um, and from my personal experience with my stepmom, it's just easier to just go through a TSA. Now, Chelsea will talk a little bit about what she does at the airport to make it a little bit more smooth for her, and we'll jump to her now. So for me, the process, when I do arrive to the airport, I check my mobility scooter at the gate. So that way I can have it with me from as soon as I get to the airport, going through security, getting to my gate, navigating around the airport. If I do want to grab snacks or something before the flight, I have my scooter with me the entire time. And then before the flight, I go up to the flight attendants at the gate. I get a tag for my scooter that identifies that it's my mobility scooter and that wherever I land, they bring it back up directly to the gate so I have it as soon as I walk off the plane. There is an option for people with disabilities that do not have the ability to walk themselves. There are aisle chairs that a lot of people utilize. Um, and when it does come to boarding a plane with a disability, usually the airlines are pretty good about letting you pre-board so you can get on before anyone else and it's a little bit easier to navigate through the aisles without having to walk by a bunch of different people. Now, the flight. Please, for love of all that's holy, pre-board. It's just gonna be so much easier on you and you can do it. Honestly, why wouldn't you want to get on the plane early? You can make sure your carry-on actually makes it. Unlike me, who's stuck in the back praying that there's some overhead room up there for me. Actually, I pre-board too because I get two seats. But if I didn't, I'd be stressed about that for sure. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is restroom needs and planning for them. So if you know that there's no bathroom that is ADA accessible on the flight, make sure you go beforehand. Um, I've heard some people say that they wear diapers. That's up to you, but it might be an option that works if there's no other option. And sadly, frankly, and I think this will be a little bit of the theme of the video and probably a little bit of what Chelsea chimes in on as well, is that it's not perfectly accessible. And there are a lot of opportunities for growth in travel. And so you have to plan for your needs not being met. And that sucks. And I don't love that, but I want to be honest about that in this video. Now, Long haul flights are supposed to, and again, supposed to being the keyword, have a handicapped bathroom. And if you have traveled um, and they, you know, your chair has obviously been taken away and gate checked, they are supposed to have a travel wheelchair to assist you to the bathroom. I want to say supposed to because I have seen horror stories of people that have not been able to get that wheelchair and have had to literally crawl to the bathroom. And that is terrifying. I don't wanna put that energy into the universe, but I also wanna be honest and upfront. For the most part, I've had pretty positive experience when it comes to traveling with my mobility scooter, but I know that that is not the case for a lot of people. And I think pretty much across the board, there's a huge opportunity for airlines and airports to better train their staff on how to assist people with disabilities, people with limited mobility, and then specifically anyone traveling with any kind of mobility device, whether that be a cane, walker, scooter, motorized wheelchair, whatever it may be. I've had a few experiences where I've landed and usually I let everyone else get off the plane because it takes them a little bit of extra time to bring my scooter up to the gate. So instead of me getting off and standing there and waiting for what could be 20 minutes, I let everyone else deplane while I sit and wait for the flight attendants to let me know that my scooter got there. So I've had a few instances where I've been stuck on the plane for upwards of 45 minutes to an hour. 
I would say that's the longest it's been. And while I am able to physically stand and walk off the plane myself, I've been told by the flight attendants that I should stay on the plane because once I'm off, then they don't really see it as an issue to escalate and try to figure out as quickly. So I've stayed on the plane in the past just while the ground crew is figuring out where my scooter is, how to bring it up in a timely manner. So that's always, of course, a little bit frustrating, but I think advocating for yourself while traveling with women in mobility is my number one piece of advice. After your flight, you're gonna pick up your device. Now, walkers are typically kept on the plane along with canes, and then actual wheelchairs or electric wheelchairs are gonna be available in baggage claim. Before you leave baggage claim, check your vehicle. Make sure it works, turn it on, operate it. Do not leave that airport if something is broken, make sure you report it immediately because as soon as you get out of the airport, it's going to be a lot harder for you to get any type of, you know, help in managing broken parts or issues or things not working. I, of course, really hope this doesn't happen to anyone, but it is pretty common, unfortunately, where an airline can damage a mobility scooter or a wheelchair. So if you are ever in this situation, I think the number one thing you can do is advocate for yourself. I would let them know right away. I wouldn't leave the gate. Once you get your wheelchair and notice something is wrong, I would notify a team member of the airline. I would file a report. I would try to get in contact with the corporate office as soon as possible, take as many pictures as you can, document anything that's wrong. And from what I've heard from people who have had major issues with any kind of damage to their personal wheelchair. It can be a lengthy process trying to get any kind of response from them or a solution, but I would just continue to stay diligent, follow up with them, you turn to social media to, to share your story and hopefully have other people amplify um, anything that went wrong to hopefully motivate the airline to respond to you in a quick fashion. Um, but always just take pictures of what it is, document it, report it, and hopefully they will be cooperative and be able to offer a solution to you moving forward. So for hotels, in the US, it's pretty simple. Just ask for ADA compliant rooms. They should have handicap rooms in almost every hotel. And by calling ahead and speaking with someone there, you can make sure you have that room booked. International things get a little tricky because there are different policies for each country. So the easiest way to do this is to look on TripAdvisor or look on travel websites that cater specifically to those traveling with wheelchairs or limited mobility. And also ask about steps, terrain, and distance. Those are your three kind of things you're gonna be focused on. If there's steps, is there a ramp that you can get up on? Is the terrain rocky? Even if you are walking with a cane or a walker, like uneven terrain can be very difficult to manage. So make sure you're aware of that if it exists and how much of the course you'll have to walk is it part of, right? If it's a little bit, you might be able to do it. If it's a lot, it might be a complete no-go for the hotel. So when it comes to traveling with a disability or limited mobility of any kind, I am a huge advocate for saying planning in advance is super important. I went to Europe a couple years ago for the first time ever and going into it, I was really nervous about what was going to be accessible. You know, when you think Europe, especially as an American, you think of really old hundreds of years buildings and architecture that definitely wasn't created with people with disabilities in mind. So I was really nervous about that. So before traveling every city that I was going to, I looked up in advance what specific areas I wanted to go to. If there were any monuments or any activities I wanted to do, I looked and researched about the accessibility they had. And I also reached out in advance, even if they said online they did have accessibility, I would email them, let them know I was coming. I have a mobility scooter. I would need a ramp or a lift, an elevator, whatever it may be, and try to talk to someone in advance. That way, if I did need to schedule an allotted time for someone to be there to either grant me access to an elevator or to a specific train car or route or boat with a ramp, whatever it is, usually having that little extra planning and communication with wherever you're going can really go a long way. 
And you know, when it comes to traveling, whether you have limited mobility or not, there's always gonna be things that don't go as planned. So I think just going into it, knowing you could plan the best that you can, but things are gonna go wrong, things are gonna change, but that's okay. I think that's the, the beauty of traveling. Not everything is always uh, perfect, but you adapt. I think people with disabilities or limited mobility have such a great way of adapting naturally. It's what we do, it's what we have to do. Uh, so I think whenever you're traveling, it's good to just kind of keep that in mind. And as long as you can manage your own expectations and whoever you're with, I think that you can always have a, some kind of a, a positive experience for sure. Now, you can always choose to make this whole process a little bit easier on yourself by booking through a travel accessible program. There was a great article written recently about six amazing travel accessibility programs that are basically organizing and designing travel for people in wheelchairs or with limited mobility. I would say personally, if it were me, this would make the whole process a lot less stress by allowing someone who's an expert to tailor and build your vacation for you. I know Chelsea has actually traveled with some of these programs, so I'm gonna cut to her for her to talk about some of her experience in traveling with some of these accessibility-focused travel companies. I'm so happy to see that there's so many new resources for people with disabilities or limited mobility when it comes to traveling. I think within the past five years, I've personally seen a huge wave of accessible travel companies. And it's been such a breath of fresh air and also really easy for me to start planning trips more often than having to do all of the research from the beginning to the actual trip. Um, you know, there's a lot of advocates out there that are sharing their stories, sharing the different places that they visit and the accessible things they've done, which is a great resource. And then there's companies that plan accessible trips from every aspect, whether you have a wheelchair or limited mobility or you use a walker or you can walk but need to take a few stops every couple steps, whatever it is. Um, so there is one company that I recently traveled with. I had a great experience with them. They're called Wheel the World. They have kind of a, a very unique story. One of the founders was paralyzed at a young age due to an accident and him and his best friend founded this company because they love to travel and they thought even though one of them was disabled, why should that not allow us to travel anymore? So they have a really unique story, a really passionate one that they just want to help people of all abilities travel. And I was very grateful to go on a trip with them recently to Costa Rica. And I used my mobility scooter the entire time, everything from transportation to the hotels and resorts we stayed in, to all of the activities we did, even going to the beach, getting in the water, everything was accessible. They either had notified places beforehand that we were arriving to let them know our accessibility needs. They had people that toured with the group with us that were well-versed in even getting a wheelchair onto a bus, things like that. So definitely an option for anyone who doesn't have the time to plan a trip, look into accessible travel companies. I think that it, it really just was such a weight off my shoulders going with a company like Will the World, knowing everything accessibility wise was taken care of. So all I had to really do was show up and enjoy the ride. Uh, so that would be something I definitely recommend looking into if you haven't already. Again, if you are going at this alone without a travel company at your back, make sure you pre-book transfers and that you practice with your travel companion if you're traveling with someone, how to break down and put together your vehicle so it'll fit in a car. This is something I never thought about until I traveled with an electric wheel wheelchair at Disney. And it is a process to learn how to break down a chair. So it sucks, but educating the person with you is probably your best bet and making sure you have more flexibility in where and how you travel around the country. When you're looking for activities and restaurants that are accessible, again, research on TripAdvisor, follow people like Chelsea who are experts at traveling with a disability. They're gonna talk about places they visit and you can find great locations by looking at their social media. It's a win. Also, those tour groups are great resources and honestly, something that I, I'm so grateful exists, but you're gonna have to, again, what's the word, plan. I would also say something that's been 
really great for me in traveling with my stepmom who has a walker is she really loves bus tours. In some locations, it's very difficult to actually access different buildings or landmarks, but you can see them from a bus quite well. She was able to see a lot of places in Shanghai that she wouldn't have been able to walk to off of the top of the bus. It took a little maneuvering to get her up there, but then we stayed for like two hours and she had an amazing experience and didn't feel like she was missing out on some places. So buses are an option. Obviously, I would prefer for those locations to be accessible, but part of traveling with a disability, unfortunately is, and this is just the reality, and, and obviously making videos like this hopefully will help change that reality, is that not all of them are accessible. So finding ways to at least experience those locations, buses are a good option. So the last thing we're gonna cover in this video is where is it the easiest to travel with a disability? And I did not do this research. There was actually an amazing article written by CNBC that ranked countries by their accessibility. So I actually have linked that article down below. You can read all about the countries that are easiest, well countries, cities, places, that are the easiest to travel with a disability. Um, again, there is so much to cover on this topic and I am doing my best. I'm really grateful for Chelsea stepping in here and offering some pro tips and I'm sure there's things we still missed. That said, I do believe in a world where everyone gets a chance to explore and learn from each other, both culturally and just for fun. So hopefully this video will help other people do that. And that's really the purpose of Glitter and Lasers Adventures and uh, my purpose of, of really creating. So with that, guys, I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Go out and see the world. Peace.